Welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and I am ranking the charms for the Commander format. And of course, before I get to that, I'm going to have to explain what do I mean by a charm? Of course, charm is magic player lingo. There isn't necessarily a specific definition for it, I don't think. However, I think most magic players would agree what a charm is. They originated back in Mirage Block. They're all instants. They are all modal and they are all, of course, called charm, right? They have charm in the name. That's how you know the difference, right? So for example, a chaos charm and a cryptic command, both instants, both modal. But of course, cryptic command is not a charm because it doesn't have charm in the name. And charms are also modal times three, right? They always have three different modes on them. And that is the reason why they are so good in the commander format, I think, and so used in the commander format is because of all those different modes. Like I say all the time, you never know what your opponents are going to be doing in a commander game. So it's great to have that card in your hand that can do three different things, whether it be dealing with what your opponents are doing, or maybe somehow working with your deck. Of course, I'm not going to be talking about all the charms in this video there are over 60 in the commander format i'm going to be doing the top 20 here these are the top 20 charms for the commander format in my humble opinion and i'm going to start out at number 20 with trevor's charm blue white and a green and of course it's an instant they're all instants and of course it has three modes destroy target enchantment exile target attacking creature or draw a card then discard a card and for me when i'm ranking these charms i want to see three modes that are all usable in the commander format and Trevis Charm is not one that's played a lot definitely not one that a lot of people will think of maybe a lot of people have never even seen it before but these are all pretty darn good modes obviously destroy target enchantment is the one you're going to use the most that's always going to be usable in any commander game three mana instant speed destroy and enchantment isn't too bad exile on attacking creature that's not bad either you are exiling works great against that blightsteel colossus situation certainly always usable in a commander game and Worst case scenario, you can loot, I suppose, if none of the other stuff is really working for you at the moment. I think it's pretty good. Next up, Orzov Charm. White and a black instant. Return target creature you control and all auras you control attached to it to their owner's hand. Destroy target creature, you lose life equal to its toughness and return target creature with mana value one or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So as I go through these charms, I'm going to be ranking the modes on the charms as I go. So for this one, destroy target creature you lose life equal to its toughness is probably the one that's going to be used most two mana instant speed destroy a creature is pretty good losing life equal to stuff is not great but this does hit any creature two mana instant speed hit any creature on the battlefield is not bad return a creature you controlled and all auras attached to it to their owner's hand is very weird obviously in the commander format there's not a lot of decks where you're doing the aura thing just i return my commander to my hand i don't really care about the auras i'm responding to a board wipe i don't want to have to re cast my commander from the command zone it certainly is a mode that you can use in the commander format a lot returning a creature with mana value one or less from your graveyard to the battlefield again that's not one you're going to use a lot it could come up i would say most commander decks probably have at least one creature that is mana value one and especially if you're in that black white aristocrat style of deck it can be a great fit i'll just say probably a slam dunk for this is a killian ink duelist deck where that's using auras a lot this might be a great fit where i can save my commander and all the auras attached to it as well might want to give a consideration there coming in at number 18 dawn charm one and a white instant prevent all combat damage that we dealt this turn or regenerate a creature or counter target spell that targets you this is certainly one that has been used in the commander format for a long time has even been repented in commander legends for that reason and again because all these modes are very usable now i would say for sure counter target spell that targets you is one that never gets used i don't know maybe once in a while that fringe scenario but for me when i'm looking at these charms i'm thinking okay if i have two that are very usable and i'm going to use them all the time and then i have one that is a very fringe scenario but could be really good that's great right they are all very usable even if that counter target spell that targets you is not one you're going to use a lot it is a possibility though in fact it could be a game saving possibility in some situations i like regenerating in the commander format i think it's underrated so regenerate target creature is also good and obviously the fog effect is also going to be really good as well the fact that it's mono white also means you can fit it in a lot more decks so i guess that does play into it a little bit as well coming into number seven 
17 Cabaretti Charm. A red, a green, and a white instant. Cabaretti Charm deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creature or planeswalker. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample and end a turn. Or you can create two one, one green and white citizen creature tokens. So of course, we just got a new charm cycle from New Capenna last year. There's a lot of great ones. In fact, I think I might have all of them on this list. This one's not bad. The best option here, honestly, I can't even pick one. All of them are very usable, although I would say all of them are very usable in a specific strategy, right? All of these either probably want you to be having creatures or can be obviously creating creatures if you don't have a lot. Either way, that strategy is gonna want this card. Either it's a removal spell or it's a sort of overrun effect or you're just adding to your team. Either way, all modes here, pretty decent in a commander game. Next up, we got Jund Charm, black, red, and a green instant. Exile target player's graveyard. Jund Charm deals two damage to each creature. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. It was reprinted in Commander 2013 because I guess they thought it would be a pretty good card in a Commander game and I think it is. I mean, all of these modes are very usable. The removal options or the interaction with your opponents, those options are almost always going to be usable in a Commander game. I mean, instant speed deal two damage to each creature is pretty good. That's not bad at all. Instant speed, I exile my opponent graveyard because they're about to reanimate a big creature. Also really, really nice. And of course, if neither of those situations come up, I can just put two plus one plus one counters on my commander. That's pretty good too, right? All very usable modes. I like this one a lot. Next up at number 15, certainly a commander staple is Rakdos Charm, red in a black instant. Exile, target player's graveyard again. Destroy target artifact and each creature deals one damage to its controller. So this one has been a commander staple for a long time. I think mostly because, first of all, the being able to instant speed, exile your opponent's graveyard, as I just talked about, is really important. Of course, destroying an artifact is always good, although as far as permanent removal goes, Artifact might be at the bottom of my list. I would likely want to hit enchantments first and then probably creatures and then maybe even lands before artifacts. Like when I think about some of the most powerful permanents in the commander format, artifacts, I can't think of a whole bunch. I can think of a lot of enchantments, creatures, and lands that I want to get off the battlefield though. Although destroying artifacts is something you definitely want to be able to do. Each creature deals one damage to its controller is one that used to get used a lot more in the commander format. People really liked that mode a lot. This to me is a little overrated. You know, for me, Jun Charm is underrated in the format. This one's a little overrated. I think I never play it. It's been reprinted in a bunch of commander sets because people really like it a lot. If I'm in Rakdos Colors, I could probably think of some way better removal options than this one. I can certainly think of better graveyard hate cards as well. It's pretty good. It's on my list because it is. I think it might be a little overplayed though in the commander format. Coming in at number 14, Simic Charm. Green, blue, instant target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Return target creature owner's hand. This is another one that for me is underrated. I guess maybe because it's in blue and green. Maybe because it's in Simic colors. There's just so many options for, you know, instant speed interaction. Of course, counter spells being the main one. But I like all of the modes on here. And all of these modes are going to really save the day in my opinion, okay? Return target creature to owner's hand obviously is an easy one. That in a lot of situations can either be I'm bouncing that Blightsteel Colossus or whatever that creature is that's about to kill me, maybe my opponent's commander, or my opponent's commander is about to allow them to go off because they have a Corvald or something. I bounce that Kiki Jiki to break up the combo, right? Game saving scenario. Permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn, of course can be a game-saving situation. You always got to protect your stuff. Likely, it's going to be the one thing that is being targeted that you're going to be protecting, but that's pretty good too. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn, obviously is going to be used in the situation where you can make your commander bigger or any creature, sure, but also that can be used as a protection option. That's one thing people don't think of a lot is those cards like Toxic Deluge, for example, that are going after your creature's toughness, your opponent is going to pay life equal to the toughness that's going to get rid of all those creatures. They're not expecting you to have a Simic Charm in your hand. They're going to expect to wipe the entire board in response. You cast your Simic Charm, giving your commander a plus three bump, and they're going to survive that board wipe. That could be really good as well. I think this is a super underrated charm in the format. It's pretty darn good. Coming in at number 13, Arch Mage's Charm. I think this is the only one that doesn't actually belong to a cycle. However, it does fit the criteria. Blue, blue, blue. So three blue mana instant. 
to counter target spell, target player draws two cards and gain control of target non-land permanent with mana value one or less. So of course, when this card first came out, everyone got really pumped about it for the commander format. I would say Modern Horizons 2, as has been probably been brought up a few times, is maybe one of the best commander sets ever. This is one of the cards that immediately became a commander staple. Obviously, countering a spell is great. For three mana, that's not great, but of course, there's a lot of other modes here. Target player draws two cards, that's not bad. Gain control of target non-land permanent with mana value one or less is probably the one, funny enough, that gets used the most because people love stealing their opponent's soul ring. Obviously, every commander game you play is likely going to have at least one soul ring. So three mana, I steal my opponent's soul ring. Not too shabby, I think. But obviously, the other two modes are very usable in a commander game as well. Certainly is a great one. The three blue is the only thing that's really holding it back. In a mono blue deck, it's great. How much does it get played outside of that, though? A two color deck, it's getting hard. Leaving three blue mana up to counter a spell, that's pretty tough, right? So I don't know how much this sees play outside of mono blue decks. It certainly is a very usable charm in the commander format, though. Coming in at number 12, Grixis Charm. Blue, black, and a red. Instant. Return target permanent to owner's hand. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. Creatures you control get plus two, plus oh until end of turn. So again, all very usable modes. And you know what they used to do with these charms is the colors that you have are the different modes, right? So you got these three colors and those three colors sort of apply to the different modes. Returning a creature to owner's hand obviously is the blue, right? That's what blue does. Target creature gets minus four, minus four. That's a black ability. And creatures getting the plus two bump is the red part. So that's sort of the flavor of the card and that's another thing that is really neat about a lot of these charms now of course returning a permanent to owner's hand at instant speed is always going to be great minus four minus four will kill a lot of creatures i don't love it as a creature removal option but it will kill a lot of creatures and creatures you control get plus two plus oh is good it's not super usable in a lot of grixis decks that's probably why this card doesn't see as much play as maybe it could if you have a grixis deck or a deck with these three colors in it though that has a bit of a go wide strategy this this seems like a pretty great card, right? Giving that plus two, plus O bump to your entire team can be really good. Coming in at number 11, the other Grixis charm, Krosis charm. Blue, black, and a red instant. Return target permanent to owner's hand again. Destroy target non-black creature. It can't be regenerated. Destroy target artifact. This is one that has been reprinted in a few commander sets because it is a great versatile removal spell in the commander format. Being able to do all those things on one card is great. This is a really versatile removal option in the commander format, I think. And even with all the great removal options we have in the format now, for me, I would still try to find room for this in a Grixis deck. This to me is just slightly better than Grixis Charm because it is destroying a non-black creature, which is just slightly better than doing the minus four, minus four. And of course, destroying an artifact is always going to be nice in a commander game as well. Pretty great removal option for a commander deck, I think. Coming in at number 10, Abzan Charm. White, black, and a green instant. Exit target creature with power three or greater you draw two cards and lose two life distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures so this seems like a pretty great include if you're doing any abzan theme with plus one plus one counters because obviously you can put those counters on your creatures it is doing it on two different creatures if you want to pretty great again i will point out all of these are instants right so that makes all these abilities so much better being able to put counters on your creatures at instant speed can be really good responding to that toxic deluge again can save your creature maybe you were planning on saving this to draw cards your opponent cast that toxic deluge and now you can use it to save your commander instead i block my opponent's creature right nice little gotcha combat trick moment where my opponent attacks because they think i have a smaller creature i block and then i throw the counters on it and it survives that interaction or kills their creature so instant speed put counters on your creatures is really good obviously the draw two cards is always going to be usable and exiling a creature with power three or greater is fantastic it's almost Almost always going to be that creature with power three or greater that you want to be exiling so the limitation there isn't really that bad in my opinion really great charm in the commander format coming in at number nine naya charm another one that has been used in the format for a long long time and still is just recently reprinted in dominar united commander red white and a green instant naya charm deals three damage target creature return target card from a graveyard to its owner's hand and tap all creatures target player controls so the weird one here for sure for me and always has been since I first saw this card is tap all 
all creatures target player controls. Again, the colors are sort of supposed to play into what the charm is doing. The three damage to a creature is obviously red. Returning a card from your graveyard to owner's hand, I believe is supposed to be the green, right? It's a regrowth effect. So the white part of this is tapping all creatures target player controls. I guess white does do the tapping creatures theme a little bit. That sort of feels blue to me, but I guess it does fit the white as well. It certainly is usable in a commander game, right? Because my opponent casts that crater hoof. They're about to run everyone over. They think they've got the game won. Instant speed. I tap all their creatures down. Again, another really neat gotcha moment. Dealing three damage to a creature. Not super great, but certainly can be usable in a lot of situations. And returning a card from a graveyard to owner's hand, of course, is great. Again, we can get that regrowth effect, but also you can use this as a graveyard hate option where instant speed. My opponent's about to reanimate that big creature out of their graveyard and aha, I'm going to return it to your hand instead. Pretty funny. It's obvious why this card has been a commander staple for so long. Coming in at number eight, another one of the new ones. And I guess I have all of the Grixis charms on this list. All the blue, black, and red ones. I believe there's three and I've got them all on here. They're all pretty good. Maestro's charm, blue, black, and a red instant. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Each opponent loses three life and you gain three life or it deals five damage to your creature or planeswalker. And I have this one ranked fairly high for a couple of reasons. First of all, each opponent loses three life and you gain three life is something you could always do in a commander game. Obviously, five damage to a creature or planeswalker is going to get pretty much every planeswalker off the table. Like this is mostly just a destroy target planeswalker and five damage to a creature again is pretty darn good. That's going to get a lot of creatures off the battlefield. I think likely though, the option that is going to be used most here because of the color you're in is that first one. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put one into your hand and the rest in your graveyard. And of course, there's a whole lot of Grixis decks out there that want stuff into their graveyard. And a lot of people do the self-mail, which I don't love. I love options like this, where I can look at the top five cards and I get to pick the one card that I really want in my hand. I have a Cabal Coffers in that top five. I want that in my hand because I can't get it out of my graveyard. And then the other cards I can put in my graveyard. This to me is just a slam dunk in a whole lot of Grixis decks, right? It's not just about what the card is doing. It is also about the color combination that it belongs to. Coming in at number seven, I think this is the most underrated charm in the commander format. I think it's pretty darn good. Demir charm, a blue and a black instant, counter target sorcery spell or destroy target creature with power two or less. Look at the top three cards of target player's library, put one back and the rest into that player's graveyard. So let's go through these one by one. First of all, counter target sorcery spell. I say all the time, the cards that I want to be countering in the commander format are almost always going to be non-creature. First of all, right? That's why I love an offer you can't refuse. It's probably my my favorite counter spell in the entire format. Even more, if we're going to get even more specific though, they're almost always going to be sorceries. Those game ending spells that I absolutely need to counter. The Rise of the Dark Realms, the Insurrections, the Expropriates, the Time Stretches. Those are the spells that are going to just ruin the game or possibly even end the game for me. This will counter all of them. This is a pretty decent counter spell option in the format, I think. It can save the game for you. So we already have a mode on this card that can save the game for you, which is great. Destroy target creature with power two or less obviously is very usable. You're probably not going to get a lot of great options with that, but there are a few commanders out there, really powerful ones that do have power two or less. I really like this last one. And I've put this in a few decks because that last option fits really, really well. Look at the top three cards of target players library. Again, we are using this on ourselves or our opponents. And there's a lot of different situations for each of those. And also put one back and the rest into that player's graveyard. That scenario also works again in any of those graveyard strategies where I have the one card that I want to draw and then I have cards that I want in my graveyard and rather than just I self mill and throw a bunch of stuff into my graveyard that I don't want there, I get to pick the one that I get to keep and the others that I want in my graveyard will go there. And again, we're in the colors, blue and black, Demir colors, which there's a whole lot of decks, a whole lot of strategies in these colors that are fitting that. I'm not even talking about the Grixis or the salt eye ones just in demir colors i think there's a whole bunch of commanders that want to be doing that kind of stuff and i think this card is horribly underplayed in the commander format i think it's one of the best charms that we have coming in at number six riveteers charm black red and a green 
instant target opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker they control with the highest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control exile the top three cards of your library until your next end step you may play those cards exile target players graveyard so again with the graveyard hate i think this is like the third or fourth one on here with graveyard hate that's always necessary in a commander game so i like that that mode is on there the other modes impulse draw of course always usable in a commander game even more usable if you're in that sort of exile strategy and then i really like target opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker they control with the highest mana value i don't love restriction on my creature removal spells however if i'm gonna have any this is the one i want because i'm gonna get their biggest meanest most threatening creature off the battlefield and of course because this is sacrifice it gets around a whole lot of stuff and because it is instant speed as well right my opponent's attacking me again with the blightsteel colossus this will get it off the table so it's a pretty great removal option in any Jun deck, I think, on top of being graveyard hate and card advantage. Coming in at number five, another commander staple for a long, long time, Golgari Charm, black and a green instant. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn or destroy target enchantment or regenerate each creature you control. So this is hitting on all cylinders. We have three modes that really are doing things that are completely different from each other. We have a sort of board wipe option. Obviously, minus one, minus one is only going to hit those very small creatures but again we have that gotcha moment where my opponent has the avenger of zendikar come in and in response to them cracking that fetch land i can instant speed kill all their plant tokens certain tribes like maybe a cranko deck that minus one minus one is going to be extra good as i've already stated on this video regenerating is very underrated in the format unless your opponent has that wrath of god or that damnation which don't allow regenerate regenerating will save against a lot of the board wipes in the format and two mana instant speed, I protect my whole team is pretty darn good, especially in Golgari colors and destroy target enchantment is always going to be usable in a commander game. As I've already stated, the permanent that I probably will want to get off the table the most is going to be enchantment. So I really like the enchant removal option here. Fairly obvious why this has been a commander staple for such a long time. Speaking of commander staples coming in at number four is Boros charm. I think this is probably the most commander staple charm of them all i think it's actually not even refutable has been reprinted in a ton of commander sets for that reason red and a white instant boros charm deals four damage target player or planeswalker permanence you control gain indestructible until end of turn or target creature gains double strike until end of turn this i think might be the only charm i mean it's certainly the charm that i've played the most i think it might be the only charm where i've used all three modes on several occasions because they're obviously all very usable now of course the one that is used the most by far is permanence you control gain indestructible into a turn for sure that is the mode on this card that has been used in commander games more than any other it's really really handy i have won games because of that as i say all the time protection is a must-have in a commander deck it's one of the things that you absolutely need it can completely turn the game around and in one particular situation it did completely turn the game around because i was playing against a guy who cast an armageddon and this makes all your permanents indestructible which not a lot of cards will do so my lands were indestructible everyone else's lands got destroyed so i was the only one with lands in play that guy thought they had the game won after they resolved their armageddon that wasn't the case because i had my boros charm in hand obviously that mode is incredibly valuable in a commander game and gets used more than any other however the other ones are pretty good too right four damage to a player or planeswalker i have used this to get a planeswalker off the table and as someone who doesn't like planeswalkers i definitely appreciate having that on this card i've also used this card even though it doesn't seem like a lot of fun to end a game by just going face with the four damage to my opponent they only had four life left i had the boros charm in my hand they passed turn and i was like you know what i can just go face with the four damage and end this game and i did not a super fun way to win the game but i have done that before as well and i've also given double strike to a creature which of course you're usually going to be using on your commander but of course giving double strike to creatures is always good as well certainly a commander staple and one of the best charms in the entire format without question maybe better though and again color plays into this a little bit so boris charm gets used a lot because it only is two colors bant charm is going to get used a little bit less because it is three colors and the top three cards on this list are three colors so for that reason they'll get paid less than boros charm or golgari charm but i think overall they are better bant 
Charm is a blue, green, and a white. So of course a bad card is an instant, destroy target artifact, put target creature on the bottom of its owner's library and counter target instant spell. So we are destroying an artifact, which isn't my favorite removal option in the format, although will always be usable. Worst case scenario, I destroy my opponent's soul ring. Counter target instant spell again is not my favorite. I probably would prefer sorcery if I'm picking all the different card types that I want to counter. Sorcery is probably first for me, then maybe instant or maybe enchantment, you know, like you can use a bent charm to protect your stuff, right? A lot of removal is instant speed. So I can three mana protect my commander from that swords to plowshares. So you can think of this as a protection option as well. Also counters like Cyclonic Rift, right? There are a lot of really powerful instants in the commander format as well. The reason that this was played in the commander format a whole lot, not nearly as much as it used to be. This was an absolute commander staple back in the day is because it puts a creature on the bottom of its owner's library, which is maybe one of the best options for removing creatures. I mean, I guess exile is technically better, but putting it on the bottom of owner's library, boy, they're never going to see that card again, likely, right? And you used to be able to do this on your opponent's commander before they changed the tuck rule, right? Putting something on the bottom of owner's library is called tucking, and people loved this card in the commander format because if you tucked your opponent's commander on the bottom of their library, that was it. There was no way to get it back into the command zone. They had to just hope they could search for it or maybe draw it again at some point. If they shuffled their library a whole bunch, hopefully it got to the top, but likely they would never see it again. They changed that rule a few years back. So this card wasn't nearly as good, although I would say tucking someone's commander on the bottom of their library is pretty mean. I don't know if I would ever actually do that if they could never see it again. Of course, the, because the rule has changed, as soon as it changes zones, you can just put it back in the command zone, but is a pretty great option. Again, the Blightsteel Colossus, I tuck it on the bottom of their library. The Avacyn, I tuck it on the bottom of the library. That option deals with any creature on the battlefield very, very efficiently. And that, of course, for me, it makes it a really great charm in the commander format. Coming in at number two, Salte charm. And of course it's black, green, and a blue instant destroy target monocolored creature, destroy target artifact or enchantment, draw two cards and discard two cards. So for me, this is the charm that I think has the most usable, versatile options on it. All of these are things you're gonna be doing in a commander game. You're probably gonna be wishing you could do all of them. You can only do one, of course, because you're gonna be very easily able to do them all. First of all, draw two cards and discard a card. Of course, you're always going to want to do that. And again, in particular, in Salty Colors, I likely want something in my graveyard, right? I know some of those other charms were just drawing you two cards and that's it. But guess what? A lot of decks want to be discarding and a lot of Salty decks in particular actually want a card in their graveyard for whatever reason. So the discard apart on this is actually a little bit of an advantage. Destroy Target Monocolored Creature is good, not great. I would say destroy a multicolored creature. Again, if I'm getting to my preferences here about restrictions, I would prefer destroy target multicolored creature on a removal spell over a monocolored creature. I think it's probably more likely, certainly with someone's commander, it is likely it's going to be multicolored. However, I will just say, if you have a card that says destroy target monocolored creature, it's always going to be usable in a commander game. Unless you're playing against three guys that are all playing colorless decks. It is possible, and I have played games against my patrons where everyone is playing a monocolored deck, and if it says destroy target multicolored creature, that card is now not very usable, right? So monocolored probably is actually more usable in a commander game. Certainly it is usable. Without a doubt, you're going to see lots of monocolored creatures in a commander game that you want to get off the table. Likely the most usable part here, though, is destroy target artifact and enchantment. Again, I would say enchantments are the permanent that I most likely want to get off the battlefield in a commander game. They're the ones that are going to be either really powerful with smothering tithe, Ristic study, or they're going to be locking down the game, not allowing me to do stuff like a stasis or a rest in peace, right? That's the kind of cards I think of when I think of removal. And of course, this is going to be able to do that. It's also going to be able to destroy artifacts if my opponent has an Acroma's Memorial or a Immortal Sun or something like that as well, right? So it's going to get the monocolored creatures and the artifacts and enchantments. And if I really need to draw cards, I can do that as well. I think this is a phenomenal option for any commander deck if you're in these colors. 
The best charm in the Commander format, though, I think is Obscura Charm. And again, whenever I'm doing these lists, I'm just looking up all the cards and then I slowly start putting them in order. And as I started to move up the list, I start at the end and move my way up. I got to like Bant Charm, Salti Charm, Obscura Charm. And I'm like, you know what? I think this is probably my favorite and also the one that is likely the most usable as well. Again, it just came out last year in New Capenna, white, blue, and a black instant. Return target multicolored permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Counter target instant or sorcery spell. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. All these modes are great. You're going to be using them all in a commander game. And again, this is one of those situations where you're likely going to want to use all of these. Let's start with the first one. Okay. This card is an absolute must. It's an absolute auto include. If you're in an Esper deck where you have a commander that is mana value three or less, of course, it's going to be multicolored. Now, outside of your commander, I think it's likely you will get into a situation where you're going to be returning multicolored permanents directly to play that are mana value three or less. I can think of a few permanents in these colors that are played in the commander format a lot that you might want to be doing that for. But I would say that's probably other than the commander situation, the one you're going to be using less, right? So if you're in a deck where your commander is not mana value three or less, you're still going to want to play this card because of course, destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. We all know there's a lot of great planeswalkers out there, mana value three or less that you probably want to get off the battlefield. Creatures as well. Again, I don't like the restriction there, but the fact that it is creature or planeswalker makes it a little bit more versatile for you. And I think likely the one you're going to be using the most is counter target instant or sorcery spell. So now again, we're in the situation where I can get all those rise of the dark realms, insurrection expropriate sorcery spells but i can also get the cyclonic rifts and the removal spells as well right so it is also kind of a protection spell i guarantee you at no point in a commander game are you going to draw this and wish you hadn't it's a very versatile card in the commander format and again for me the part where you're returning that multicolored permanent directly to play really puts this over the top for me but that is it that is all that is my ranking for the charms in the commander format the top 20 they're all pretty great this is just how I did it. You really can't go wrong with a lot of these. Even some of the more obscure ones are pretty darn good, especially if you're in a specific theme where it fits. You guys let me know in the comments below what are your favorite charms or what you think maybe are the best. If by some chance you want to purchase any of these cards for your commander decks, because maybe you've never even seen them before, I do have a TCG player link. Give it a click. It helps support the channel. But that is it for today. And thanks for tuning in.